right here is the most perfect little lace pillowcase you ever did see. I got two for three doll hairs at the thrift store and I'm about to turn it into a perfectly summer shoulder bag, which then converts into a backpack and back again. Let's get right into it. My name is Orly and this is the DIY designer on this channel. I do DIY fashion, I do styling content, I do personal style content, sometimes home decor, but really my overarching obsessive goal is to get you to express yourself through your style, whether that's the style of your home or the style of your clothing. I really want every item you own to express who you are. DIY is an amazing way to do that because you can customize things that already exist in the world for a fraction of the cost. Today's video is a really great example of that because it's super thrifty, super simple to do, and it's all about figuring it out as you go. DIY, you don't always know what you're doing, right? I'm not a professional. I don't have pattern making skills. I really kind of figure things out as I go. I got this pillowcase and I knew that the fabric was amazing. I knew it would make a killer summer bag, super on trend, very like free people-ish, but I've never made a bag like I'm gonna make today. And so I just started going for it. I grabbed other bags, I looked at how they were made on the inside, and I just started going for it. And what I came out with was really, really cool. So I hope that it inspires you guys to tackle that next project. Okay. Let's do it. Here are my two pillowcases that I thrifted for three bucks for the set of two. They're in incredible condition, no stains, they were perfect. Now, because they're pillowcases, they're basically already lined. This fabric, which would normally encase the pillow, is gonna function as my lining, and so it's not gonna be sheer, no holes, perfecto. So step one, you're gonna fold it in half. We're gonna close up our side seam. So you're just gonna pin closed the two side seams. Now, if you have something decorative like I do with a lace detail or a pattern or a scalloped edge, you're gonna wanna line those up so that when you create your side seam, Obviously, the pattern looks really nice when you flip it inside out. I'm gonna do a simple straight stitch, and this is just going right down the side, easy peasy. This is gonna take you two seconds. Now, when you're done with this, what you're gonna end up with is almost like a regular canvas bag, like every canvas shopping bag you have. I wanna create something that has a little bit more structure on the bottom, so we're not quite done yet. What you're gonna do is you're gonna take it, you are now going to fold it so the side seams are in the middle. So grab it by the middle and fold it in half. Now I'm looking at my side seams. What you want is to create a stitch that's gonna go perpendicular to your side seam. That's gonna create a squared off edge. Let's do it again. Take it, fold it in half so that your side seams are now in the middle and not on the sides. You are going to create the side stitch. The higher that stitch goes, the more of a square shape your bag is gonna get. The shorter it's gonna get and the wider it's gonna get. The lower you make it, the longer your bag is gonna be and the skinnier it's gonna be. What your dimension, basically, let's say it's four inches, that's how wide the bottom is gonna be. Let's say it's six inches, that's how wide the bottom is gonna be. You want your stitch to go perpendicular to your side seam, it'll create a little triangle, and you're just gonna sew it, that's it. So now, wherever you've decided to do it, again, based off the shape that you want, you're gonna do a simple side stitch, uh, straight stitch all the way across. Start on one side, zoopity boop, all the way to the other, and you're done. The basic structure of our bag is completely done now. Flip it inside out, and you're gonna see that it creates a perpendicular seam on the bottom. So take a look at this. Side seam, straight stitch. There we go. Now what it did is that's the shape of my bottom, this squared off rectangular edge. That's now the shape. Because it's softer, it's gonna be a little bit slouchy, but you'll see when I try it on later, it does actually create a squared shape. Next thing that you can do is stitch down, this is you know optional, but I wanted to do it, stitch down the, uh, the side seams, right? So the way that I sewed it, I ended up with this little kind of like scalloped edge detail. I'm just sewing it down. Not only is it gonna look nicer on the inside, but it's actually gonna create a little bit of structure. And here, you wanna sew down those two little triangles facing each other into the bottom. That's also gonna create more structure at the bottom of the bag. Now we're gonna do grommets, not only for our clasps, so we can attach some purses, but also so we can run a draw cord through and create like a bucket bag style. I'm gonna snip literally one stitch open because when you do grommets, you want it to be a tight fit. So one tiny stitch, it allows me to push the grommet through and then I will be able to hammer it down, sandwiching it into place. Now, if you've never done grommets before, I'm gonna show you a couple of times how to do it, but basically there is a male side and a female side. The male side has sort of a longer end and the female side has a flatter end. The male side is what faces the outside. So that's what gets pushed through the fabric. You then put the female side on top of it, sandwiching the fabric in between. And then you're gonna hammer the two together with the tools provided. Every grommet set is gonna come with the tools that you need. For the drawstring, I decided 
decided to do smaller grommets and I decided to center each of them in the scalloped edge so that it follows the pattern. So here we go. I'm gonna take a hole that's already in my pattern so I don't need to cut anything. I'm putting the male side through. I'm grabbing the female side, putting it on top. It wraps right around it. Putting it on the little protector it comes with. That's very important. Then this metal piece goes right inside the hole and when you hammer it, the male side sort of wraps around the female side sandwiching it all down. So again, male side first, then female side on top of my little protector, hammer it down. And you're just gonna keep going. This is gonna go super, super fast and you're gonna do one every few inches. I worked with the pattern that I had, but you can of course do it however you want. Once I've got it going all the way around, now I get to run my cord through. I decided to use rock knot cording because I thought this would be a really fun bag to work with all of my different rock knot straps. It's perfect for the summer, it's white, it'll work with any color strap. So we're done, I'm gonna show you how it works. Okay, so we have our perfect little like slouchy bucket bag. It is super cute, super smushy, super soft. Now, when it comes to attaching your clasps, you have two options. The grommet that we put on the side is gonna function as something that you can attach your clasp to. That's why we did a bigger one and we did it higher. That's great if you have a larger clasp, something like this. Just push it right in, right? And that's gonna hold. However, if you have smaller clasps on the end of the straps that you wanna use, I would recommend adding a little ring. These are actually binder clips, which you can use, or you can just get like the little tension O-rings. You add them to the end and it's just gonna make it easier. So what we're gonna do is we're just gonna attach our strap. I'm putting on the 30 inch crystal lace because I think it's gonna be really fun. I'm sort of thinking of this as a bag that I can wear with all of my rock knot straps, which is why I put the rock knot cording as my drawstring. This is, this is the most perfect summer like bag outfit ever. I'm wearing it with this little linen top. These are jeans that I DIY'd. It's perfect. And in the sunlight, uh, it will sparkle like crazy. Perfect little slouchy drawstring. The bottom flattens out because of the way that we sewed it. So it's not, hanging as much. It's got a little bit more of a flat bottom. Make this an even higher shoulder strap. That looks awesome. Oh my God, and it matches my shirt. Look at that. It's the perfect bag. I mean, beach bag, roll up a little towel, throw it in, a water bottle, some sunglasses, some snacks. Like it's roomy. I'm gonna throw the sweatshirt in. Oh my God, and I still have more room. It creates that, again, that kind of like bucket shape which is really cool. You don't want it to be this like long, <laughs> saggy thing. You want a little bit of a flat bottom and that's why those seams on the side are so important. But I've got a huge sweatshirt in here and I did also throw in a t-shirt before just to put in something like this whole top part is still empty, black. Now I am not super particular about my hardware. Like I mix and match. So the fact that this is silver and this is gold does not bother me at all. Super into this. I could easily do like a black leather. You want the cording and the strap to complement each other. While we're doing black, I'm gonna do the black lace. And it makes all the difference doing the matching tie. It really does. 30 is my shortest, but if I had a shorter one, that would be cute. Now it's time to convert this sucker into a backpack because it's just too cool not to do. So what you're gonna need is another ring. You're either gonna use your little binder uh, clips, which I'll link below if you want those, or the tension rings. We're gonna go to the back, center bottom, and we're gonna put a ring like right here. And I'm gonna do it through here and here so it's holding on to two pieces and I'm just gonna close it. Now, this is the 56 inch strap, the clear rock knot liners. You're gonna want a longer strap for this. I mean, if you have two matching ones, you could do this, but this is easier. Attach one side to our little ring at the top. Now, take the bottom and put it through the loop, right through the hole. And if the clasp is too big, the binder clips just open it, put it through and then close it. Now I'm gonna take the other side and I'm gonna put it up to here. I have a backpack. No, it's too perfect. It's too perfect, look at that. We've got a crocheted, free people-ish backpack with two chain straps, which by the way, look like a little jewelry detail. How cute is that? When you think about weight, all of the weight is really here. This, all this is doing, you can see it, it even hangs. It's not holding. All it's doing is bringing the straps down to the middle. So the single ring in the bottom is just an anchor point, but there's no weight on this. So it's not pulling, it's not yanking. All the weight is on the grommets, which are reinforced. So it's totally fine. You know what I was just thinking? 
What about rose gold? This is a 56 inch rose gold. What if we did rhinestone backpack straps? I wanna go in the sun. Is the sun gonna come out? Cause you know this like sparkles like diamonds. But look at that. I'm gonna rock knot it because I can't help myself, but you guys can do this with anything. So just keep in mind that when you're doing the backpack version, you need a strap that's much longer than a strap you would normally wear. For me, a normal crossbody is a 46 and this is a 56. I'm really into it. I, I hope that you guys loved this one and we'll do it. Tune in next week. I have a really, really fun DIY. It's actually a mashup of like sweatshirt and skirts being turned into these like breezy summer dresses. They're like maxi shirt dresses. They are so cute. Um, I originally saw the very first one on Free People about a year ago and had it screenshot in my DIY folder and I finally uh, knocked it out. So I'm very excited they came out super cute. Oh my God, I love it. All right, you guys have a beautiful week. Thank you for being here. I will see you next week.